Wow, great coffee. Should be, it's Boulevard Coffee. Sponsor for Coffee and the Candidates. Candidates for the Los Gatos Town Council, of course. So join me, Larry Gersten, when we interview all the candidates for the Los Gatos Town Council. Hi, welcome to Coffee and the Candidates, brought to you by the Los Gatos Community Foundation, Boulevard Coffee, and of course, KCAT. My name is Larry Gersten, and I'm here to talk with the candidates so that you may have some idea of what they like to do when you go to vote. So please sit down, grab a cup, and join us. We're talking now with uh, Margaret Smith, prominent in Los Gatos, owner of Domus for uh, several years, way back in the day, uh, and attorney, right? Uh, so you've been involved uh, with the town for some time, obviously. I have been. I have lived here almost 30 years. And during that time, I've been the owner of Domus, which was the iconic home and home accessory store in downtown Los Gatos. I have been a president of the Chamber of Commerce. I have been appointed to the Planning Commission. I've been chair of the Planning Commission. I have uh, volunteered on numerous town committees and commissions. I have been a volunteer in the schools. So yes, I've been very involved here. I'd say I have a proven track record. I guess I'd find it hard to believe what you haven't done. Thank uh, you. All right, we'll go along with that. That's great. So the, 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 the virtue of you being so involved in Los Gatos all these years is that you know what's good and what's not. So what's the biggest problem you see right now in the town of Los Gatos? Well, I, I wouldn't call it um, the, a, a problem. I call it an opportunity, and we know that. And so uh, right now we are facing some fiscal issues, um, some budget issues. And I like to think that um, I call this the, uh, the great reset because we're coming out of COVID two years. Certainly our businesses have suffered. Our schools were closed, um, so we're, we're resetting ourselves. And what I see now as an issue is how we get back into the rhythm of the Los Gatos life that uh, we love and enjoy. The town forecasts a budget deficit in the next few years. Um, how would you deal with that? Well, I, um, one of my priorities is certainly taking a sharp look at the budget. I do believe that I have a, a lot of financial experience. Domus was a very large business. I dealt with a very large budget myself. Um, the important thing for me in looking at the town budget is to remember that at least 80% of the town resources go to core services for our residents. And so each time we look at a line item, I want, for me, I know that behind that number are people, places, or things. And so the decisions have to be consequences. Um, it's not the draconian measure, uh, method of, um, oh, we're just gonna reduce the budget across the board 10% or 5%. No, every one of those line items represents a core value for our town, a resource. Um, and so for me, when I'm on the town council, I will look very carefully at the budget, keeping in mind what I just said, behind every number, there is a person, a place, a thing that has consequences. Some people think that uh, the core values, as you say, uh, are so well put together and so well funded that the only way to continue in, in the wake of an impending budget is to put a sales tax increase on the ballot. What do you uh, think about that? Um, I am not opposed to a sales tax increase. I'm, uh, I'm open-minded to revenue generation and what format that takes, I think takes more um, thought. Uh, I'd like to have more information before I make that decision. Uh, but certainly, I don't think um, something like that is out of the question, but it also may not be necessary. Um, our businesses in coming back from COVID may start uh, generating more revenues. So I, I, at this point, I'm not prepared to say that, oh, there will be a sales tax increase or not. We need to take a look at a bigger view of what is happening in the town fiscally. You know, you talk about uh, income that the town derives. Uh, of course, some income comes from uh, permitting, uh, new businesses coming in, the, pay, the, uh, the uh, kinds of uh, uh, monies that they pay. Some people have also said that uh, they're too, it's too uh, uh, wound up, too much bureaucracy to get a business going. Uh, you've been here for a long time. You had a business. What do you think about the permitting process? Uh, does it cost too much? Is it, is it too wound up in bureaucracy? 
Well, I believe uh, maybe another way to frame the question is, have we modernized our systems of business licenses and fees? Um, in the case of a business license, for instance, we had not looked at the business license fees since 1991. So we certainly were, um, it was certainly relevant to bring it up to the standards of 2022. As a business owner, I did not feel um, onerous fees or permits. Uh, I always worked closely with the town. I uh, felt the town was well managed and um, we certainly had elected officials who were focusing on issues. And so I was, I was a very content and happy business owner here in Los Gatos. Okay, that's a plug for the Chamber of Commerce or something anyway. That's good to know. Uh, let's talk about something else now. Uh, Highway 17, summer in Los Gatos, alternate forms of transportation that is through the town. Um, so many residents feel they can't go anywhere, anywhere near uh, Los Gatos Boulevard. Uh, what can be done about this? You're in charge now if you get elected. Right, and certainly methods have been tried, including uh, contacting the various app companies and asking them to not divert into downtown streets that uh, will provide no relief whatsoever. I do have some thoughts uh, about it, and um, one would be internally. I actually had suggested several years ago that we do something similar to San Francisco, and that is that we post a big sign at intersections that say it's an automatic $250 fine if you block this intersection. I've been in San Francisco, I have seen an officer standing on the corner with the ticket already written and go over to the person and knock on the window and hand the ticket over. Part of our problem that I observe every weekend is that the intersections are blocked. So I'd like to clean that up. Also, with this past weekend, I myself cut down a side street and I was so relieved to see an officer in a car right on the corner so that people were coming to a full stop and they were letting each other go. And this was on one of the side streets. So I felt that we did have more police enforcement and that would be you know, one of my thoughts as well. There's other things. Um, Los Angeles, for instance, synchronizes all of their traffic lights. Uh, it's amazing if you think of how large that city is that there's synchronized lights. We do not have that I can tell synchronized lights. And or sometimes I call it the four minute lights we wait at the four minute lights, but that's not what's moving traffic through the town. So I'd like to see something like that happen where we take a, uh, a better look at how we're actually, how our traffic flow is functioning. I know that we have recently instituted no right turn um, on Saturdays off of some of the side streets. And I think that maybe has uh, helped the traffic. I don't know that we're going to not have traffic. What I'd like to do is to see people move through town uh, at a steady pace um, and allow we residents to be able to go to the grocery store and get back home again without having to worry about the ice cream melting because we've just gotten stuck. Let's talk about another town, otherwise known as the North 40. Um, what do you think about the way that's uh, progressing? The North 40 certainly um, looks different than I thought it would look uh, when I was first involved in the North 40 project. Um, however, recently I have uh, driven through there and I actually see a community forming. I saw um, children on trikes and um, I was thinking the outside view of North 40 uh, is perhaps not what's happening on the inside. So um, I think the residents are forming a community. What uh, we've had to live through is the uh, constant upset of the traffic patterns along Los Gatos Boulevard. I know we're going to move into phase two. I'm very excited about phase two for the North 40. I'm hoping that we will um, deliver the retail there, uh, the, com uh, the commerce that we had been promised. I know Eden Housing is making um, great strides now in putting up the housing for the seniors. So I think there's a lot happening there that's exciting. Um, how, how it looks from one corner may not be the whole story. Are you satisfied with the architecture of the, uh, the, the uh, apartments, uh, uh, townhouses? The, condo, the condos? Yeah. You know, one thing I know about Los Gatos is um, there are many different types of homes for many different types of people. I would not be one to, um, to say that those homes are 
perhaps I wouldn't live in them, but people, people can love that architecture. And in a way, if you think about Los Gatos, as you drive through the neighborhoods, you see many different kinds of houses. And um, that's, part of the, uh, that's part of the charm of Los Gatos. So uh, different houses, different types of houses for different people. So do I take that to mean that it's okay? You think it's all right? I think it's acceptable for the people who want to live in that type of architecture. Yes. And did, did the town, forgive my ignorance, did the town have any say on that architecture? Uh, when I was on, you were the, on the planning commission, I was on, right. well, I wasn't on the planning commission for the final decisions. When I was on the planning commission, the architecture uh, did look different and um, it was sketches. So for the final um, architecture, uh, I would say that it, it, the design was given to the town and approved. Mm. Okay. Uh, architecture, let's talk about that in the form of the parklets that we see along the, the boulevard. Um, and uh, I should say Main Street and, uh, and what's it? North Santa Cruz. North Santa Cruz, thank you. Do um, you think that's a good idea? you think it's working out? You know, it's part of um, the evolution of Los Gatos. I could tell you that five years ago, there wouldn't have been such a thing as a parklet. Uh, parking was so sacrosanct. I mean, the, the merchants wouldn't have wanted it to go away. The townspeople certainly didn't want it to go away. We really valued our parking. And then COVID came. Yeah. And this was one of the solutions to help the downtown businesses. And it's, it's become very popular and we have adjusted to the parking. So um, I would say that parklets are here to stay and many people find them uh, attractive and, um, and necessary for the town. You, you like them? Um, I like the idea of outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have certainly traveled to other places that have had outdoor dining. I enjoyed it. And so um, it would not have been my first choice uh, a few years ago. But now that I see it, um, I think that it adds to the ambiance of the town. What do you think about the idea of uh, literally blocking off um, North Santa Cruz uh, for two or three blocks where, where there's the most intense movement, the, the stores, the restaurants? Uh, they've done that in other places. I, I think uh, Mountain View has done that, as a matter of fact, on Castro. Um, what do you think of that idea? I am not in favor of that idea. I uh, truly believe, having had a very large business on, on a corner, that uh, the flow of traffic is necessary. I like the idea of more um, pedestrian walking areas. I'm sorry we can't expand our sidewalks to make them even wider, uh, but I am not in favor of closing down North Santa Cruz. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the way the, the council works. Um, we had an unfortunate circumstance last year where uh, the uh, uh, shouting and screaming uh, uh, in the town council halls uh, literally led to a continuation of the Zoom meetings um, simply to try to dis discourage uh, uh, interference. What can be done about that? Well, uh, reframing that question in a slightly different way, the um, upset that happened last year to me showed um, a profound disregard for the respect of the rule of law, of the role that elected officials play. And I found it very, very disturbing. Um, what can be done about it? We have taken steps today. The, the rules are much cleaner than they had been. I think what happened was somewhat unexpected. So now the town council has worked together with the town staff and they've developed the uh, guidelines for how to attend a meeting. Um, you know, I, I understand a person's, uh, people's rights to speak their mind and to take a position on, on either side of an issue. However, uh, disrupting, um, disruption of that nature in a public forum, uh, defamation of character, I, I just believe it needs to be a shutdown and people need to be re-educated as to what is, what, what is the normal discourse that we expect when we disagree with people. Now, one of my campaign themes is bringing voices together. And that's because I do see that there are extreme opinions on both sides of most issues in Los Gatos and frankly for the entire country. 
I believe that people can come together and um, find a common goal, common good, and maybe um, this is the time to do that for Los Gatos, to bring out the best in us. Well, to that end, we saw just a few days ago flyers posted all over the downtown area uh, disparaging a candidate uh, and uh, certainly uh, referring to what I think would be the dark side of human behavior. Um, what do we do about that? It seems to be that there's this uh, element in the town that uh, is not only differing in its opinion, but uh, doing so in such a way where, as you said, uh, and I agree, is, is quite disruptive. How do we, how do we stop that? Well, Larry, I, um, in that incident that you're talking about in terms of posting the flyers, I happened to um, see those flyers very early on when they were posted. I immediately, uh, so I had something personal that I did with it, I immediately alerted the candidate that that was happening. I instructed campaign volunteers of my own who just happened to be downtown that day to pull them down. I also prepared a letter to the town council and the town staff and copied all of the candidates and um, presented that flyer and said that, um, you know, we, we obviously still have forces in town that um, believe that this kind of behavior is acceptable and I, and, I, and I want us to understand, all of us, that it's not acceptable to do that. Do you think maybe that the town, you talked about educating people, and I'm, I'm an educator so I certainly agree with any education that goes along those lines, but do you think that the town maybe should be setting up uh, some sort of uh, regular activity once a month or something like that, a public forum? where these kinds of decisions and discussions, I said, take place uh, in a good environment. I mean, you know, I think about that, that rally that we had last night, I think it was November, uh, which drew so many people. Uh, and I'm wondering whether, whether you think it would be a good idea to have more of those kinds of events to, as you say, educate uh, people. Well, I'm glad you, you're uh, asking me about that because years ago, the town of Los Gatos did have charrettes. And I don't know if you're familiar with charrettes or not. But we had um, a question of development that uh, was a very hot issue in town. And the stakeholders in different neighborhoods were brought together with one facilitator. And um, each group of stakeholders was able to discuss um, the pros and the cons and what they could have as common ground. Uh, then at the end, we all came together. Uh, there were many, many participants in these charrettes all over Los Gatos. I'd like to see charrettes um, started again uh, on topics that we, agreed, uh, we agree um, need to be discussed and find common ground. Um, on, on a more permanent basis? On a more permanent basis, definitely. Okay, all right. Um, so let's just go ahead and get ourselves moving about eight weeks and decide that you've won. Congratulations. Um, what do you want to do positively? I know you want to look at the budget. I get that. You know, that, that, that's, we all want to look at the budget because we're convinced there's a pot there somewhere and we're going to find it or there's something wrong and we're going to find it, which is good. I, that's a good idea. What proactive thing do you want to do to make this town better? Well, I want to do um, two things. I would say my uh, big audacious goals and hope to achieve them in the, in the four years. Uh, one thing would be to uh, bring a trolley system to our downtown where we could begin to connect all of our commercial centers. And I have an idea of an electric open air trolley that perhaps, um, we'll just use North 40 because you mentioned it, maybe you can park at the North 40 and you start there, but you can take this trolley and come right down Los Gatos Boulevard, you can stop and get your boba, you can go to the movies, and you can just loop right back around and go back to your car. But it is a way to connect our commercial centers because that's what we want. We want vital uh, businesses here um, and and that's one way if we can connect our services. Also, we take the cars off the street because we do care about the environment. Uh, my other idea was uh, the community gardens and that has already uh, begun. The town council had set aside some money for the beginning of a, of a community garden more on the uh, near Union and we'll see how that goes. Uh, personally, I'd like to see every uh, school in town have a community garden, but that's not the town council, but that is my wish for the schools. Um, and I think, again, it's a way of bringing people together. 
Well, Margaret Smith, thank you so much for being here. Coffee and the Candidates, uh, we appreciate your company and we look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. And thank you for watching today, Coffee and the Candidates. Uh, we brought to you, brought to you by Los Gatos Community Foundation, uh, Boulevard Coffee, and KCAT. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.